This is Persephone Brewing Company's Dry Irish Stout from the Persephone Brewing Company in Gibsons, BC. The truly Canadian among you may recognize the, a connection between Gibsons, BC and Persephone. I'll uh, leave that to the commenters to explain to the rest. Oh, it's quite nice and creamy, actually. So today, because I had a hell of a week at work and I'm tired, I am going to do a nice, simple, relaxing and fun teardown of this little novelty shock stick thing that I got in the mailbag a few weeks ago. Now, it's uh, it looks sort of like, and it's modeled after, a Chinese police taser type unit. It even has a uh, cheesy little off-center sticker on it saying People's Republic of China Public Security. And on the back, a little sticker that says Police Electric Shock Stick or Shock Electric Baton. Um, it's got two buttons there and two little electrodes up at the top there and an LED for extra shock value. Ooh. But as I discovered when I was opening this thing in the mailbag, if you hold your finger on the little metal foil sticker here and push that button, you get a little zorp across your hand. But if you're insulated from everything else, then you're fine. And it's, and it's not horrendously uh, shocking. It's not dangerous, I don't think. But at least they had the wherewithal to have it just go through one hand and not both. But I'm not sure if these probes up here do the shock thing as well. No, it doesn't appear so. Okay. Um, well, I guess let's just get into it. Nothing much more to say about this thing. It's got three little screw holes on the back. Carefully not zapping myself again here. So let's take this apart. Hey, there's the top. So, what can we see so far? Oh, let's zoom back in again. We can see that there is a connection screwed onto this little metalized foil guy here. You can see that there is a wire connected to the spring of this metalized plastic button. And also to one of the electrical contacts. Okay. And then this button, that's just the LED button there. And this one is the one that hurts you. We have three, those are LR44s or are they something else? No, those are a little bit bigger. Those are LR1130 batteries. Okay. Times three, so four and a half volts-ish powering the thing. And then what do we have in here? Oh man, is that all that's in here really? There is a transformer with a whole bunch of windings on it for voltage boosting. And there is a little anonymous blob chip. Well, that's boring. Um, the white LED just goes straight across the battery. Yeah. Oh. Okay, and these little probe tips up here. One of them goes to there. And the other one goes to... Oh, okay. So you can get a zap across these tip, these probe tips too. No, I'm not going to do it. Hmm. Well, that's uh, disappointingly simple. I was hoping there was something a little bit more interesting in there. That's a ripoff. That's not nearly enough for a video. Let's take a look at this light bulb that uh, showed up from an anonymous uh, donor, a viewer like you, uh, in a previous mailbag. I'm guessing that it's going to be your typical 
uh, capacitive dropper, and then a whole shitload of LEDs in series. Let me just get uh, some testing things and whatnot before we tear it completely apart here. Okay, so before we get into the cheap knockoff kilowatt thing, we have cold white. We have 2.1 watts. What does it say on it? It doesn't say on it. Okay. We have 20 milliamps, power factor 0. 0.6, which is about what you'd expect from uh, these cheap capacitive dropper type things. And yeah, back to 2 watts. Okay. So not much more to learn from that. You know, sometimes you can just pop these things off. It looks like it's twisting a little bit in there. That's... Hmm. That isn't threaded, is it? No. Okay. Okay. Well, that was easier than I expected. So the two wires going down into the bottom, one of them just goes underneath this little sort of thumb tacky kind of thing, and the other one goes to the side there. Uh, how do we get that out? Just yoink on the capacitors and hope neither of them's charged. Where's another spudger? Um, okay, hang on here. Are these capacitors charged? Not anymore. Okay. Do I have to snap that? Maybe. I'm just going to relieve some of the tension on this cover here and see if that'll help me push it out a little bit. There, that did it. Okay, so what do we have for an arrangement of LEDs here? So it looks like around the base, we've got a little dot, which probably indicates the starting and ending, but we have positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, all the way around there. So that looks a lot like we have series strings going up and back down and up and back down. Um, and then they all solder onto the bottom of that little top hat board. Huh. I can sort of see some tracks around the top of here. You can see some tracks and breaks in here. So I'm thinking that these are two in parallel and then in series with these two in parallel all the way up. Because so it looks like this is just little squares of copper pad all the way up there. Why am I guessing? There's an easier way to find out. And that lights up those two. Can you see that? Okay. And all the way up there. Sure. And then is that connected to that? No, it's not. Huh. I was for certain that that was what's going on up at the top there. The negative marked one. The positive mark. Okay. You can hear that chirping. Uh, I just didn't get a good connection. So they aren't all in series like that, though. That pair is. That pair isn't. That's two negatives. That's a negative and a positive. Okay. The same thing happening down here. Some of them are in series. Okay, those two are in series. Uh, how about this negative and positive? Nope. That pair is, though. Okay, so that's an odd little arrangement. Uh, and then somehow we get up onto the top here. And there's two in parallel there. So what do we got around here? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Okay, so there's 12 LEDs up there, so six parallel pairs. Okay. And I'm assuming that they are in series with some of these guys. What have we got going on down here? So the power comes in there from the live, which is a center pin. 
Assuming your sockets are wired correctly, they should be, but you never know if you bought the house from somebody else who had a penchant for doing uh, DIY stuff. Anyway, I digress. We go through this capacitor, 250 volt, 225J. I'll have to look that up and put it on the screen. Anyway, there looks like there is a little bleeder resistor in parallel down here. Is that uh, 105, 100K? Uh, sure. And from there we have a little bridge rectifier, pretty obviously. Um, there's the other AC wire coming into the other corner of it. DC coming out of there. Mr. Smoothing Capacitor also has a little resistor across it. Same, another uh, 100K. And then from there, the only other component is this resistor over here. What is it? 820, 820 ohm? No, 82 ohm. Uh, 82 and 00s, right. And yeah, and then there's a place that you could put a chip, but it is not currently populated. Should I desolder those and uh, try and figure them out? I'm guessing that they're all in series. So I'm just going to do a bit of quick counting and math and uh, be right back. Okay, well, this uh, is pretty much what I thought was going on. So these LEDs are in pairs all the way up and down, and most of them are wired directly in series. Uh, the first one, uh, which is this one here, goes up to the top, then it's wired in series with the parallel pairs up here, and then it goes back down there and just zigzags all the way up and down, up and down, all the way, till it gets to the last one here, which then goes through the 82 ohm resistor and to the negative side of the capacitor, and which is also in parallel with the negative side of the bridge rectifier. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, there are 50, 57 pairs of LEDs on there. So 114, I think. So 114 multiplied by, I don't know, what do you want to guess? Three volts? No, that's not right. Because they're in parallel. Uh, did I mention that I had a bitch of a week and my brain is fried? Uh, 57 times three volts, 171 volts. Okay, uh, that's reasonable for a DC voltage. Some of you may be asking, how do you get 171 volts DC out of 110 to 130 volts? I think I had 120 some. Well, that's because this is a sine wave. Let me just... So the, the voltage is coming in from the wall as a sine wave. Now that 120 volts is not peak to peak. That is an average RMS which works out to about 0.7 of the peak voltage. That peak voltage is closer to that 170 volts. Um, and then when you rectify it using a full bridge rectifier, no, I'm not going to put the electro boom thing in here. Um, you get this. So now you're measuring there. Uh, Peak that you're measuring sort of peak to peak, but it's still bumpy. Then you put in the smoothing capacitor, which turns it into a just gently ripply thing. And the overall voltage of that is going to be that 170 volts, give or take. So here is the quick math, the 170 volts, just roughly times 0 0.707, which is the RMS calculation. Uh, and there you go, 120.19 volts exactly. If you want to know more about it, uh, take a look at the Wikipedia article on RMS. I will put a link there, there, somewhere. Um, so let's just quickly prove this in the most dangerous way possible. Don't worry, I'm screwing it in barehanded while it's not plugged in. 
Oh, it still works after the teardown. Cool. So let's go into, say, 200 volts DC range. With my cheesy, cheap Chinese meter. I'll see if I can do this without killing myself or causing any sparks. That's on the positive. That's only 130. Okay, so I estimated high for the voltage drop across these LEDs. Let's see what it really is. 2.7 volts. Okay. So I wonder if we're just underrunning them for current then. And so now I'm going to short out one of the LEDs uh, and m add the current shunt and the meter in in series with it. 20 milliamps, approximately across each uh, each pair of LEDs. So 10 milliamps per LED. They're not being run all that hard, right? Okay, I guess that's reasonable enough. The only thing that was off was my math. <sighs> Actually, before I get rid of this janky setup, I'll go into volts AC and just see what's being dropped across that capacitive dropper capacitor. Yeesh. Oh, shit. <laughs> I had it in, still in the current shunt. Always, always, always remember to put those back. So what happened there? I shorted out this capacitor, the dropper capacitor, which means there was nothing re uh, restricting the current except for that 82 ohm resistor. And all of a sudden this thing uh, uh, went super bright. Okay, now we should be safe here. 20 and 30 volts being dropped across that uh, dropper capacitor. Okay. And it should be safe now across that dropper capacitor because it's got that 100k resistor across it, which will dissipate any residual voltage in it. All right. Well, that's, that's all fun and games. Um, not exactly the uh, teardown I was expecting to do. I was hoping that this little shock stick would be a little bit more interesting, but... Since that was boring and kind of de or kind of relatively safe and battery operated, I figured I might as well go into this, get two teardowns in one. Thanks for watching. As always, thanks to the donor, the anonymous donor who sent this light bulb in. Um, and I didn't even destroy it enough that I can't put it back together so I can use it for something or other. Maybe in my janky paint booth. Um, thanks to Patreon supporters who, uh, Help me buy fun and weird little things from the mailbag. And yes, I think I already said it, but thanks again to you, the viewers. I will talk to you later. And hopefully I won't be so bag tired from work the next time and I can do something that involves more thinking.